So uh, we were going, we're going to end with um, the team from the University of Southern California here to present XR Studio, where you will learn about gaining consensus through mixed reality. Welcome, USC. XR Studio is a networked application that can run on a Microsoft Surface and HoloLens. It allows users to work collaboratively across multiple scales and dimensions in real time. Our team wanted to explore the different experiences across the mixed realities landscape, but rather than design for one piece of hardware, we wanted to design for a context of technologies and embrace the mixed realities family. To do this, we needed to find a way to translate information and perspective meaningfully across different devices, each with their own interfaces. So we began our process uh, with body storming sessions. And body storming is a form of prototyping in which we act out scenarios. Um, and we were interested in uh, the experience of how groups or teams could work together in MXR space. And so, for example, we body stormed a scenario with a team of curators who are working on the uh, design of an exhibition. And then we uh, body stormed a scenario with a, a, like a film production crew kind of liaising with the VFX team. Um, but in the end, we decided to work with an architectural office um, scenario because um, we were interested in uh, the particular um, nature of spatial design in the field and how that could work in mixed reality. So um, we, at this point, we approached Gensler, uh, which is a top architecture firm, and they've developed projects like the NVIDIA uh, headquarters and the Ritz-Carlton building. And at this point, we had our first working prototype, and it was based around a hypothesis of like how a small design team would work in mixed reality. Um, and so we had already solved with this prototype um, multi-user networking. You could create and edit geometry and then you could experience that geometry at multiple scales. So from screen scale to model scale to room scale using voice interaction. Um, and then, so after some user testing with Gensler, they confirmed that whilst we're asking the right questions, in fact, there's already some people working on these problems. And then we also agreed that uh, the nature of design tools now, it's important to have quite a high level of precision, and then that was gonna be quite a difficult challenge for us. And so we regrouped and we uh, looked at the architectural office workflow again to try and find an opportunity where, another opportunity where MXR could facilitate. And so we pivoted the project. And so our second prototype, which is what we've been demoing this morning, focuses on the architect to client relationship and how can we bring the client into the design process in a more collaborative way. So whilst architects are very good at thinking in three dimensions, this is quite hard for people without a design training. So we want to bring that ability to a broader user group. Um, so our project as it stands now, it's a design tool that arbitrages between the professional designer and then people that don't have a design training. Um, so it's a tool to persuade of the value of, de of good design, um, to give the client uh, a greater sense of authorial control in the process. So they can see their designs come to life, um, see changes in real time, and generally have an experience of their design immersively as it's, um, as it's developing. So we have developed XR Studio, which is a network mixed reality design space in the HoloLens where users can view design objects in model scale and human scale and develop these designs using intuitive physical and virtual interfaces. Now, some of you may have seen our, the prototype of our application uh, during the demo earlier today, but the application exists in both the HoloLens and the desktop or laptop, where it's most effectively actually used with a touchscreen interface such as that of the Surface. So the screen interface is where the, most of the processing of the 2D plan happens. First, the application can leverage computer's built-in webcam or any camera peripheral to capture real-time changes made to a physical paper plan using computer vision. It will then visualize the capture on screen, making it possible to also make modifications such as drawing and color picking digitally within the app itself, leveraging intuitive, precise, drawing-like gestures if run on a touchscreen interface. Lastly, the whole lens portion of the app is where the magic happens. The plan being worked on can be seen as an extruded 3D object existing in a world by both client and architect at the same time. 
every update made on the plan itself or in the desktop application may also update the 3D plan in real time. Now, if looking at the scale 3D model on the table in the HoloLens doesn't provide enough fidelity, it is also possible to make the model you're currently working on expand to life scale. So it feels like you're walking inside the model itself. All the while, you can still continue your work and modify your plan, and the life-size 3D model will still keep updating in real time. Now, over the development and design of our application, we have come to the realization that uh, the solution that we have developed actually exists in different points of the mixed reality landscape, or spectrum, if you may, that we have introduced earlier in our presentation. And we can also attempt to say that uh, our application can provide a bridge between these different points in the landscape and their different affordances. For the last phase of our prototype, we did some cinematic prototyping. We took our working prototype and realized a high fidelity filmic representation that enabled us to envision an attainable near future for our application and also understand the emotional journey of clients who are now able to collaborate in real time with their architects. So without further ado, our film. Play the movie. She does. Wonderful. Just um, follow me. Next time we can talk about the living room and the studio. 
So that's it. Thank you very much. Fantastic. This is certainly uh, one of those uh, challenging areas where you have these highly trained people as architects who are trying to read the minds of clients and come up with designs and, uh, uh, and without having a good communication tool for what those designs are going to look like. Um, but one of the things that, uh, that I've found over the years is that uh, sometimes architects resent or even don't want a lot of client opinion because they're the artists. They're the architects. They know what design is. They know what space is. And the clients don't really know what they want. And so what do you think about that? And you, you mentioned that your tool is to try to get this collaboration going between the, the architect and the client, when in fact the architect is really the one that's supposed to understand these spaces. I think um, we, <coughs> it's true, yeah, I think architects uh, uh, will struggle to um, have too much like client interaction, um, but because of their training. But I think that, first of all, like this idea came out of our partnership with Gensler and trying to identify where their sort of problem points were. And um, we see it as a tool that's giving the client a little bit of authorial control, but also helping the client to understand the value of good design and how certain spaces work in experience as opposed to um, something that's just sort of in terms of like floor plans. Um, so I guess it's what rendering has been doing for the past so many years. Um, so we imagine it that it's more about facilitating, in a way more facilitating architects um, to kind of communicate the value of what they're doing. And um, build, yeah, but also build a project that's mutually um, appealing. Right. And in our interviews with Gensler, right, a lot of the time their frustration stems the, from the fact that they're thinking in 3D and their clients cannot. And so this bridges that gap in a way that was not possible before. It does it in real time. And so a lot of those frustrating pain points are now just gone. And you thought about the idea that. Uh, that maybe in the process of this dialogue that the architects actually provide tools to the clients to begin with to say that and in being able to communicate some of the things that they're interested in their hot buttons and things like right. that so that there is a, a not just this is a design and you modify it or this is what it's going to look like but sort of something where they have a, a much more of an exchange to help them right. uh, put together what the clients say that they want Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we, we certainly talked about the, I mean, the power structure of having an architect, maybe, maybe coarse is the wrong term, but maybe coarse ideas for the client. Mm -hmm. And I think that at one point we discussed the YouTube moment for digital spaces where if you can actually author your own space um, and share that publicly to people, mm -hmm. that can be something that would be important for social networking. It's difficult to imagine that not being a creative digital authorship um, use of uh, technology. So um, that's kind of, we've thought about that before, yes. And one of the reasons is because of this whole issue that you bring up that, that usually clients don't know how to think in, in, uh, in 3D. And this really not only goes on to architects of buildings and homes and things like that, it's actually urban development. A layout of cities and things like that, particularly sensitive to that. Uh, one of my labs is in Christchurch, New Zealand, which has been leveled by an earthquake. And now the citizenry, the citizenry are trying to communicate with the authorities what they think the new city should look like and how it should be designed, but they don't know how to think about those kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, we, we do get one, sen we get input or an interface, a sensory interface for free just by being human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, but. With augmented reality, you can sort of highlight different areas of the world and maybe light up what you take for granted and don't mm -hmm. often pay attention to. Yeah. 
And I think some of these ideas come off the back of precedents that we've seen recently in using, say, crowdsourced design tools like Minecraft, for instance, and gaming interfaces. And I know there was a collaboration between Minecraft and the UN to also rebuild cities that had, um, had some kind of problem and that citizens could be part of that process. Um, so we see precedents like that to this project. Fantastic. So I, I like a, AR as a choice here for a device. I mean, I, I appreciate the fact that you have these other devices. I think that's very interesting. I guess that's the X and XR, right? It's cross mm -hmm. the device. Um, uh, so AR is an interesting choice because you, 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 the, the architect can still talk directly to the clients. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one thing I've, I've experienced um, with architects is they one, one thing that they do al like to seem to allow their clients to uh, give input on is the choice of materials uh, throughout the throughout the room. You know, given the dimensions of the of the thing have been determined, that and that's a very um, that's a really tough thing to do in AR, right? Because you need to render those materials faithfully. And typically, what they do is they have you know uh, cabinets full of samples. And they right. just run as many in front of the, the client as possible. Maybe they show some photos of previous work where they use that. And uh, so you know, I'm wondering if you, if you thought that AR was still an a the answer for that kind of process, or maybe there's some other kind of technology or device or, to, to solve that problem. Yeah, so the strength of like XR, right, is that the real strength is in being able to switch context. So for looking at materials and understanding that experience spatially, being able to go to a life size or room scale is incredibly valuable, but being able to transition back, you know, and see a model scale when you're urban planning, for example. So being able to switch those different scales and have conversations about the larger context of what goes into making a building is really what we envision. Really super functional concept here. I mean, I personally, in my practice, architects always looking at me as like, all right, you don't know what you don't know, like how we can build these things. Like there's a very common dialogue between an artist and architect, let's say. Right. Um, and it looks like when, when, like the moment in your movie, there's a part that uh, authorizing the design architect just clicks. That. It's really like a very uh, funny ways of how the meetings goes in real life. And I think you tried something very <laughs> correct and hopefully changing in the near, near future. Uh, my question is, um, I know from Gansu and many other, um, these huge practice companies are constantly designing together with visionary people and their huge spaces like NVIDIA headquarters, for example. Do they really see any um, near future application in their recent meetings with those people? For, yes. for an application yeah. like yeah. this? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. They've yeah. already started using, actually, they were already using VR. Uh, they have a platform called Fuser, mm -hmm. and they've been walking clients through the buildings. So what we discovered is if they're solving the problems, the technical problems of you know precision and like rendering materials, what we can do is empower the client to be able to participate in those discussions and gain access to that kind of world of design. And what we've also sort of discovered during our meetings uh, and and, and seeing the technologies that uh, companies like Gensler have already used is that uh, <clears throat> it is very advanced in the visualization techniques. Uh, you, can, you can literally see a model of a building uh, with another person from another other side of the world. But uh, in terms of uh, editing and co-creation, uh, it is still a very open question. And I guess this is why, this is why we in parallel try to answer the, the broader question of how do we collaborate? What is the best input system in mixed reality? Okay, thank you so much.